All right. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing good out there. I wanted to talk about the gospel for a moment. Um, and a lot about the gospel that I don't hear preached a lot amongst the grace community is the part of the new life that's uh, imparted to us. The resurrection part of the gospel. Of the good news of Christ's death, death, burial, and resurrection. Because we died with Him when we believed. Our old man was crucified with Him. We've been given a new human spirit. God lives within us. Okay, we've been given a new heart. Uh, totally born again from within. Uh, that's part of the gospel. The gospel is not just you're a forgiven person going about your business. Nothing else about you has changed. Uh, there's a, a huge spiritual change within you. But that doesn't mean that when we when we preach this truth, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you're going to be a new person and act different. No. No, that doesn't happen overnight. Okay? And some people, they struggle with this their entire life and you can't you know then you have people that uh religious people that seem like they're you know good like what what we call relative goodness right but they're not even saved right and that's why we always preach that by your actions you don't ever gauge uh by your actions if you're saved or not it's only by the blood of Christ Faith alone in Christ alone. But just because a religious person can walk around and act like, you know, a good person, quote unquote, <clears throat> does that take away from the truth that we've been born again? And that God has changed us on the inside? No, He has. Uh, God didn't leave your heart out, guys. We've been taught that, though. That's not true. Uh, Romans 7, if I'm doing what I don't want to do, it's no longer I, but sin that dwells within. Miserable man that I am. Right? Paul was caught up in the struggle of that misery that a Christian has when they sin. Okay? Doing the very thing they don't want to do. But preachers tell everybody, oh, you really want to do that. Yeah, that's really that's what you really truly want from your inner core. No, it's not. Guys, I know it's not. Christ changed you from the core. Okay? And that's why you have such a problem and an allergic reaction to sin. I mean, sure, you might think that you like it. You might think that you want it. You might think you feel like you need or want this. But that's called a deception of the power of sin that's in your flesh. That is not your heart. That is not you. You are not sin. You're not fighting with yourself. You're contending with a force inside of you that is tricking you into thinking that's you. When God has said, I've given you a new heart and a new spirit, a new human spirit, and I live within you, and I am one with you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? See, that scripture right there can't be true if you have a wicked heart. Because God can't be for a wicked heart, okay? Years and years went by. I could never properly place and understand that scripture if God be for us who could be against us when Paul's talking about Christians uh, because well what if a Christian's out sinning what if a Christian's out doing bad things how could God possibly for be for them well this is how because first of all you've been totally changed on the inside and he's given you a desire for him an undying love for Christ and when you get caught up in sinful cycles and or whatnot, it's you struggling and contending with the power that is not you. It is inside the members of your body, your flesh. Now, that does not mean that your fleshly meat suit that you walk around in is evil inherently. Okay, because when God made you know us in the flesh and we we're uh he called everything good, uh it's that sin power. That is in there. That's wrong. So we contend with 
the devil, demonic spirits, and the power of sin that is in the flesh, that the Bible speaks about it as like personification, like it's got an agenda. Its desires for you is what is said in Genesis for Cain, and you must master it. Sin lieth at the door is desires for you. It's speaking as sin spoken not just as a verb but as a noun. Okay, so this is a force that we contend with. Uh, but this is not us. So when you get caught up in the deception of thinking that, oh, man, I, I'm, uh, I just truly want to do all these wicked things, but I'm supposed to do the right thing because I'm a Christian. That's not how it really is. It's that you truly, deep within your core, don't want to do these things. But you have temptations and this power within tempting you all the time. Like what Paul went through. It's no longer I, but the sin that dwells within. If I find that I'm doing what I don't want to truly do deep down in the core, then I find that it's no longer I. This is the truth, guys. I don't care how you feel. People keep saying, oh, well, I feel like I want... Uh, well, that's because you're not understanding what's going on. Right? Because we have been born again. We've not just been died for and forgiven we've been changed but to live these things out okay to work your salvation out is a whole nother that's the walk okay uh but whether you if you uh don't start to understand these things you'll be miserable because you'll just keep thinking that you're not on God's side, and you're fighting with yourself all the time, and you're really, truly evil on the core still, and you're just a forgiven, evil, wicked heart zombie. That's not true. You've been transformed from the inside out. Okay? And when you fail to temptation, and you sin, this and that, anybody caught in repetitive things, that's like I've said before, the one-two punch of the enemy... These things are coming from the inside, or from the outside in, and then the power of sin that's in your members. Okay, so it's easily to be mistaken that oh, that's really me. No, it's not. It's a force. You know, things come into your mind. Uh, the one-two punch of the enemy. Uh, he gives you an evil, wicked thought, then accuses you of originating the thought. That's Satan's favorite thing. Okay, and the flesh. And I've heard it put this way. The flesh and the power of sin is in cahoots together. Okay? And the flesh is also a way to think. A worldly way to think. Alright? Uh, Paul said, How Foolish have you begun in the spirit and now are being perfected by the flesh? Uh, so, that's why we need to understand that this is not our truest inner core desire when we are struggling with things. Our desire is for the Lord, okay? He has changed us, changed us, and we still do these things, but we struggle with these things, and it makes us miserable when we keep choosing the wrong path. So you can be a forgiven, miserable person, right? Uh, because you keep choosing what's contrary to your inner nature. You don't have another person inside of you that is you too that wants to do these things. It's called the power of sin that is deceiving you into these things. All right? Working in your members. Paul, Paul said he finds another law working in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. God bless everybody and let this one go. I gotta go into work. I just wanted to just talk about that a little bit. I don't think a lot of people don't understand it. I didn't understand it for the longest time, but in this journey we start understanding things and we finally realize, hey, this is what's going on here, right? So uh, you are a new creation. All things are made new. We need to renew our minds all at the same time though. Okay, because the power of sin <clears throat> will war against your mind, right? So we need to just 
first get grounded in who we really are before anything. Because if you think that you're a spiritual schizophrenic, that you have another uh, nature inside of you that's a part of you still that's not dead, which God said was crucified on a cross, you're going to keep thinking that the war is with you and it'll never end until you die and you're out of the... No, the war we contend with is another force that is not us. Okay? It's called the enemy. It's called the power of sin. It's called the flesh. It's called demonic spirits. It's called Satan. Okay? But you born-again Christians out there, your old self has died and now you contend with the enemy. We're on God's side, guys. We're all His children. He wants what's the best for us. <clears throat> and He doesn't want us to be miserable. Okay? So God bless everybody. Everybody have a great day.